The Intercept has obtained audio of conservative Democratic Senator Joe Manchin and a call he had with billionaire donors. Now, it's honestly a rare glimpse into how our system of legalized bribery works and honestly what Manchin's calculations are in regard to domestic policy and some of the ridiculous public statements he's made, speaking out against the agenda that Biden has put forth in the name of bipartisanship. Now, we all know that bipartisanship is ridiculous considering the fact that Republicans have failed to pass any legislation along with Democrats. Even when it came to the Capitol Hill riots and a commission to investigate them, Manchin couldn't get the 10 Republican senators necessary to vote in favor of that. So. Republicans were able to block that effort using the legislative filibuster in the Senate. So he's been getting a lot of heat and I've been wondering if he's noticed all that heat. He has and he's trying to work with these billionaire donors to get these leftists off his back. Now let me give you a few details before we get to these video clips. The meeting was hosted by the group No Labels, a big money operation co-founded by former Senator Joe Lieberman that funnels high net worth donor money to conservative Democrats and moderate Republicans. Manchin told the assembled donors that he needed help flipping a handful of Republicans from no to yes on the January 6th commission in order to strip the far left of their best argument against the filibuster. The January 6th commission got 56 votes, of course, for short of the 60 needed to overcome the filibuster. A thorough embarrassment for those like Manchin who claim bipartisanship is still possible in the divided Senate chamber. Now, I do want to get to some of these clips, beginning with Lee Fong, who's one of the Intercept reporters, who's you know done a fantastic job with this report and many others over at the Intercept. I highly recommend his work. He's about to talk about what the objectives are of this meeting. The call opens with Nancy Jacobson. This is one of the founders of No Labels, who's you know helped found the so-called Problem Solvers Caucus in Congress, bringing together these moderate members, real mover and shaker in Washington. And she's basically laying out some hard-nosed politics, saying that you know we, the reason we have influence is because we can raise serious dollars, and we're going to basically dispense this money to make sure that people who agree with us can't be pushed by either extreme or other any special interest that. You know, they are given the political leeway to preserve the filibuster, to kind of preserve the, the, the policies and rules that, that they favor. And, and she basically lays out, uh, along with Andrew Bursky, uh, the head of a, another private equity fund in Connecticut, who's an executive board member of No Labels. The two of them, Jacobson and Bursky, are talking about how they need to raise money and dispense campaign checks, keep their allies in Congress. All right, so Lee Fong sets it up perfectly. That's what the purpose of this meeting is. That's what the purpose of no labels is. They want to ensure that the left wing, and you know, I'm sure they pretend the right wing as well, but mostly the left wing has very little say or sway within the Democratic Party and certainly when it comes to the passage of domestic policy. Mm -hmm. And so, John, before we get to the founder of No Labels and what she's dangling in front of the likes of Joe Manchin. Mm-hmm. Do you want to jump in real quick? Yeah, I mean, a lot about this is already ridiculous. Yeah, it's not even, It's you're right. It's more about stopping the left than theoretically the right. But really, it's not even, it's not even ideological necessarily. It's just preserve the tools necessary to stop anything from significant from ever being passed. And if you think, you know what we should do? Oh God, let's get some stuff that seems like it should be really easy. Like, come on, a capital commission. Right. We should be able to get that. I mean, after all, they attack the Capitol. Let's do that, and then that will show that the left is ridiculous in thinking that we need to get rid of the filibuster. When really, none of those donors care about the commission, whether it happens, whether it doesn't happen. They care about things that affect their bank accounts. Um, and so, but but then on top of it, it didn't even work. Yeah. So it was supposed to deprive us of our best weapon. Okay, well, I still got my best weapon here. Uh, bipartisanship is a is a scam. You don't actually believe in it. It's not actually going to work to deliver any solutions for working Americans. So w- then we, we can get rid of the filibuster, right? Because th- this was the test. 
Joe Manchin, Cinema said, we can get 10 good Republicans. You couldn't, you're not going to. You couldn't for something so obvious, so common sense. You're obviously not going to, nor do you care to for anything like the infrastructure bill as you know, HR1 or, or whatever. Right, yeah, I mean, look, again, like you're absolutely right about that. It, it really, I Don't call any of this a bribe though. No, exactly. The checks aren't exactly. a bribe, the jobs later aren't a bribe. None of it's a bribe, it's just intended to bribe them, that's all. Exactly. Um, now there are some questions about some portions of this meeting and whether or not what Manchin suggests breaks some laws. Yes, believe it or not, even in the system of legalized bribery, there are certain things that politicians could do that could be considered illegal uh, regarding money in politics. We'll get to that in just a minute. There's a quote that I don't even think it's an edge case. I know, but you think he's that telling them to bribe a senator. Yes, we're gonna get to that. No, no, we're gonna. I'm not gonna say what it is. Playing it's the not role a spoiler. Of Jake Uger, John it's, Adarola. No, 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 I know. I said <laughs> I can see it's right there. No, no, no. You're, no, gonna, I know. you're gonna read it, but right. it's, it's bribery. That's all it is. It is absolutely. Here, I'll I read mean, it. No, no, I'm kidding. Okay, go. All right, so Lee Fong sets it up. You get an idea of what the true objective of this Zoom call is. Without further ado, let's go to the founder of No Labels, this group of billionaire donors who want to keep everything the same. You know, the truth is there's no other group in the center that's putting the hard dollars together. And so you may see these big numbers with the campaigns, but that's a lot of soft dollars. It's a lot of super PACs. It's things they don't control. They love the hard dollars. And I, I would be hard pressed to think of any other group that can raise that sort of that sort of money. Our hope is at least 20 million over the cycle with this group and then hopefully keep doubling it, uh, you know, as we go. So, um, yeah, we're we're waiting, right, Andy? I mean, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens with this next vote, and we want to reward uh, those people that you know get to party solutions. It's just so disgusting. Okay, so let me decode a few of these um, statements. So, she talks about hard money. Um, so much so it makes you a little uncomfortable. Um, and then she talks about soft money. So soft money is. You know, essentially super PACs, dark money funding politicians. Hard money is individual donors, mm -hmm. right? And there are more limits in terms of the amount of money you can contribute as an individual donor. I think at this point it's about $2,800 per candidate. So the reason why politicians like the hard dollars is because it gives you this illusion that they're funded by small dollar donations, right? Mm -hmm. And so it helps to, I guess, deflect or, or or hide the fact that a lot of these politicians are actually, you know, funded by dark money and hard dollars. I think give them an opportunity to just, I don't know, make their image look better than it really is. Yeah, or, and, or, and they want to report on the the massive fundraising totals. That's um, right. They definitely like that. Also, they have more direct control over how it's actually used, so they can route it to the right consultants that they want, the right firms that they want. I mean. It's it's sort of a blurry line because with the dark money, there's not supposed to be any coordination, which is why you get things like the McConnelling that we mocked years ago. But we know that they're still working together. Exactly. And the reason why I chose that clip was so you can get a sense of how the bribery really works, right? She's mentioning figures there, like actual numbers there. And remember, Senator Joe Manchin is on that call. And so when she mentions the $20 million, when she mentions that money and the legalized bribery, she doesn't say legalized bribery, but she's implying it. That's the kind of stuff that entices politicians, whether they're on the right or the left, to just keep things the same or to be incredibly ineffective politicians mm -hmm. that who that who do not serve the best interests of their constituents. And we know that Senator Joe Manchin certainly has not done that. It's yeah. yeah, and really fast, like they 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 have multiple layers of it. Mansion would vote against most of this. Mansion doesn't want to have to vote against most exactly. of this. Exactly. So they would aggressively oppose our interests, but they'd prefer to just be like, "Well, what can we do? I I was stopped from helping you, I guess." It amounts to the same thing, but it's harder to convince people of what's going on when they're protected by these procedural maneuvers, arcane Senate rules, and things like that. The procedure. Now, what you're about to hear is Senator Joe Manchin, who has a suggestion in regard to a Republican Senator, Roy Blunt. And what he wants to do is persuade Roy Blunt to change his vote on forming a January 6th commission to investigate the Capitol riots. And there's a very specific reason why he wants that. Take a listen. All right now, what I'm asking for. I need to go back. I need to find three more Republican, good Republican senators 
that'll vote for the uh, commission so that at least we can tamp them down to what people said Republicans won't even do the simple lift. The common sense of basically voting to do a commission that was truly bipartisan. Uh, you know, so once the people, and it really, it, it, it just really uh, uh, emboldens the uh, far left saying, I showed you, I, you know, uh, how's that bipartisan working for you now, Joe? Uh, those are the hard things. That's where I need help, man. That's where I need help, man. So, so how's it working out for him? It's not working out at all. It's not working at all, which is why he's trying to get these billionaire donors to entice Roy Blunt Mm -hmm. with legalized bribery, okay, Mm -hmm. or possibly illegal bribery, which we'll get to in just a minute. Okay, Um, spoil it. But exactly, Uh, but but to basically convince him to vote in favor of the January 6th commission, not because Manchin thinks the January 6th commission is important, he might think it's important. But really the real purpose here is to pass legislation in the Senate uh, through this filibuster, right? Like you, you don't have to throw the filibuster out. You can possibly get, you know, the ten Republicans needed to vote yes on that legislation. And if they do, that's when Manchin gets to point to that piece of legislation that passes mm-hmm. in the Senate and say, "You see that? We can do things through bipartisanship, everybody." Yeah. I'm not wrong. And in reality, it, at the end of the day, his number one goal is to protect. Money in politics. Yeah. I mean, everything that he's done so far has made that abundantly clear, especially when it comes to HR1. That's the For the People Act, the election reform bill. The reason why he's put out his own version of it, um, an incredibly, you know, slim down, flimsy version of it, is because his version doesn't include anything about campaign finance. Yeah. It keeps money in politics. And the Republicans he loves it. don't even support that. Exactly. The slim down version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, and, like there's a lot that's revealed in these videos that are that are great, and, and you know, thank thank you to the, the the Intercept for making sure that people see it. But but one of the more subtle things is, and, and you you alluded to this. Do, do you get the impression that he cares if they fail in setting up the commission? Like it is just a means to an end. I need to demonstrate to the far left that this isn't necessary. Now, if I don't demonstrate that getting rid of the filibuster isn't necessary. I'll come up with something else. I'm not going to change my mind. It's not like we're actually doing an experiment. Can there be bipartisanship on what I'm calling a truly bipartisan commission? And we will find out. If they will work with us, then we can have more faith that we can do more things together in the future. And if they don't, then maybe the left was onto something. There's none of that. There's none of there's no concern about the commission. There's no concern about the process. It's just strategy. And it's because he doesn't have to care about literally anything, any bill that they're gonna debate, any bill that could theoretically be proposed. He is rich and mediocre and comfortable with the status quo and he's gonna be fine no matter what. Because exactly. Joe Lieberman's buddies are gonna give him a job or give him money. They're gonna protect him from primary challenges. If he ever gets knocked out, he's gonna earn 10 times as much as a lobbyist. He's gonna be perfectly fine. Don't elect people like Joe Manchin where the quality of their life None of it depends on what they do or don't do. That's exactly right. And and that's what stood out to me the most, not just about this particular story, but about politicians scheming to keep their position of power. Because what's the whole point of having that position of power? I guess there are two possible objectives. And what we're seeing represented in Congress overall is just this self preservation for profits Mm -hmm. for power for power's sake. I mean, they certainly don't want to use their power to change the country, reform things and make people's lives materially better. All of the scheming that takes place behind the scenes is about self preservation, um, job opportunities should they no longer serve in Congress. And in fact, you know what? Why don't we get to that point? Because this is the moment that John's been waiting for and I'm sure you'll be interested in this. So what exactly is Senator Manchin suggesting, right? Is he suggesting campaign contributions to Roy Blunt or is there something else at play? Well, regarding Blunt, Manchin appears to be suggesting without perhaps quite explicitly saying so, that the wealthy executives on the call could dangle future financial opportunities in front of the outgoing senator, because remember, he's retiring, he's not gonna run for reelection. Outgoing senator while lobbying him to change his vote. Senate ethics rules forbid future job negotiations if they create a conflict of interest or present even the appearance of a conflict of interest. Did we have the actual quote? Go what ahead. What actually said? Go ahead. I, I don't have it in a graphic. Oh, really? I don't think. This blue one? What's in blue? 
Oh, I do have it, my bad. We don't have a graphic for it, but I'll read it for you. So um, he says, Roy is retiring. If some of you all who might be working with Roy in his next life could tell him, that'd be nice and it'd help our country. Uh, that would be very good to get him to change his vote. And we're going to have another vote on this thing. That'll give me one more shot at it. So, yeah. so for those of you who might be working with him, that might convince him to change his vote. Yeah. That's get him a job so he'll change, promise him a job if he changes his vote. I, there is not a lick of difference between that and a bribe. That's what a bribe is. That's take it up with Merriam Webster if you'd like to, but that's a bribe right there. Mm -hmm. How they always. They hide behind things that are supposed, like supposed to, like kick up a little bit of like mud, like sand, and you know, like make it a little bit obscure or whatever. They're supposed to say, no, we don't give them the donation to change their vote. We just reward the politicians that give us what we want. And generally, that's a safe bet because they know we, we get Joe Manchin, he's never going to do a damn thing. Just keep him in office; it'll be totally fine. It's a lockdown vote. But you can't say to change their vote, that's just bribery. And like you're right, it's probably against Senate ethics rules. How is it not a federal crime? Like, yeah, I understand that this is a battle that TYT has been waging for longer than I've even been here. But I don't understand why you're gonna like even pretend that bribery is illegal when you allow what's going on right there. So you can give them direct money, but at least there it's for their campaign. Sometimes they find ways to spend it for themselves, but at least it's not like personally for them. This is 100% money that would be going to an individual senator if he changes his vote to achieve a short term political goal. Lock him up. Lock, make an example of him, lock him up. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that this is an e possible ethics violation as opposed to a federal crime. Because it should be a federal crime for all the reasons that you just mentioned, but also, What's the Senate Ethics Committee, which is made up of senators who are also into legalized bribery? Like, what are they gonna do? Right? Remember when there was clear evidence of insider trading I was happening about in that. the Senate? <laughs> yeah. In the Senate. And the Senate Ethics Committee is like, insider trading, let's see. So there was a <laughs> confidential briefing on coronavirus immediately after that. Several yeah. senators decided to sell stocks that could be harmed by the coronavirus pandemic. And we see buy ones wrong. that would benefit yeah. during a pandemic. And exactly. We don't see Doesn't anything. It look wrong. like anything like no, to no, me. It's totally fine. Nope. She like comes running out of the briefing room. So no, that's totally fine. She's just, you know, she had that on her to-do list, I guess. Oh, it's so frustrating. Yeah. The, surely the Senate Ethics Committee will save us, he said as he died. <laughs> Listen, uh, please check out this wonderful reporting over at The Intercept. There's other details that we just don't have the time to get to, uh, but I can't plug this particular story enough. Please read those details and of course, um, help support The Intercept. They do great work, uh, great investigative journalism, and um, I absolutely love that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.